Greetings, Fleshbags. Welcome to part two of the Stellaris Nemesis campaign, where last time we warred with our neighbors and ultimately nothing happened, and we claimed a whole bunch of empty space ready for our future crisis empire that I'm seeking to create here with the new DLC. But for now, we're just doing some normal stuff, just claiming territory, looking at our ancient neighbors here who are going to be a roadblock and stop us getting some territory, but also stop our rivals from coming into our territory as well. So it's quite nice, ultimately. We've kind of expanded up to the borders of our rivals now, but we've got plenty of space to fill in, so we can keep getting bigger. We're already over our capacity for bureaucracy. We can sort that out later. We've also joined the Galactic Community, and I'm going to support every new law that increases diplomatic weight from something, because I plan to have the biggest military, biggest economy, and most advanced tech. All the laws that give you extra weight will make me very influential later on, if all goes to plan. You could say that my plan to become a crisis faction is going to ruin my diplomatic reputation, but actually it's not that bad, as you'll find out later in this part. There was a little look at the extent of our empire now. As mentioned, we're up against other factions, so we can expand internally, but to really get ahead, we need to take a couple of border systems from somebody else, in particular ones that have planets in them. There was a chance to join a war with one of my neighbors here, one that I don't really understand. Somebody was calling me into a war and I was like, wait a second, am I allies to someone? I didn't think anyone could call me into a war. It appears to be a faction somewhere on the other side of the galaxy. We can now vaguely see what the other factions are through the diplomatic community screen, but we have no intelligence, so we don't really know what's going on. But yeah, someone down there wants me to attack someone up on my side, my light blue neighbors that we fought last time. Couldn't work out why, maybe they could just call me in because I was around. I didn't join because I had my own plans. That is to attack these purple guys again. They're quite nice to attack because they have two planets really near our borders. That means it doesn't cost much influence for us to take those planets, and one of them is their home planet, which will be really developed as well. We just go for it then, and this war is going to be much better than the last time we fought these guys. For a simple reason, since we last fought them, they haven't done anything with their military. It's still the same power as it was decades back in the game, whereas our navy is now like five or six times more powerful in that it has a bigger number attached to it. So not sure what the AI were up to, but they weren't building ships or upgrading the ships apparently. That means we can plow on in, immediately take down one of their fleets and a powerful station as well, both at the same time. It's annoying to fight them both, actually, because your ships get divided between shooting at the station and shooting at the enemy fleets, which reduces your damage efficiency. Just focusing down the fleet would probably be better. Doesn't matter too much in this case. We grab that border system and break on through into their space. They had another fleet in the next system and another powerful space station defending their capital. But with a number on our side, we don't really have to do anything. We just go near them and kill them. Still not killing them particularly fast. I suspect I'm still lacking weapons upgrades. Need to get more on that physics tech tree. But all is good. And we go on to fight a third time against another fleet and it dawns on me that if they had taken all of their ships and put them together in a block, which is what I've done, they might have been able to stop us. So perhaps we didn't actually have that much of an advantage overall. It's just that their fleets were spread out over three or four different areas. For no reason, I don't think there's any strategic advantage to spreading your fleets out just in your interior space. So that's all good. We throw some jars of insects on their planets to capture them. We can easily outnumber the defenders because I've just spammed loads of transport ships. That's fine. And with that, we're going to occupy the part of their space that I wanted. I was considering claiming some more space since it was going so well. But in the middle of me considering this, they surrender and the war ends. So we take the stuff I had already claimed, including their home planet and another colony as well. That's going to cripple their faction. Their economy will be out the window with the loss of their home planet, so we don't have to worry about them anymore. Although we do have an issue on their home planet here because 
it's got loads of unemployment, but also loads of empty jobs, two problems that could solve each other, and I had a suspicion as to why we had this issue, and indeed it's because our species is xenophobic, they've automatically enslaved a new species that's come under our control. That's going to be an issue, we're going to have to have a talk with our bugs about how slavery is bad for the economy sometimes, so we need to give these guys residence rights, we can't make them citizens because we hate them too much, but we can make them half citizens. This will let them work in things that aren't like slave tier labour jobs, so things like being a researcher or a bureaucrat, which make up a decent number of the jobs on these new planets we've taken. We do give them those residence rights, hopefully our other population don't get annoyed by this, I'm sure we're going to get some penalties for not acting xenophobic enough, but at least it stabilizes things a bit. Now we're going to have a more productive population. We'll work them until they die. Maybe we can please the bugs with rhetoric like that. So we need to sort out stability here. The place doesn't really like being part of our new evil empire. I'm not quite sure how to deal with stability other than just trying to make the planet look vaguely tidy and happy. I was delighted to find you can rename planets so we don't have to go with these boring names that the AI has given its planets. We can continue giving the rest of the galaxy messages. Messages they're not going to be picking up on, but well, that's their problem. We had some bad news come in immediately after the war. A bunch of claims get made, so somebody is planning to attack us. I immediately suspected it was these guys up at the top here. Actually, it's the guys on the right. This is inconvenient because this section we've colonized over here is really far away from all of our core areas. It will take in-game years for us to send military units to this front. It would be very convenient to not fight there, and broadly it would be convenient to not fight at all. We've still got plenty of expansion we can do, and after stealing someone else's home territory I was confident I probably have the most growth potential of any faction, so we don't really need to fight anyone. With that in mind, I switched to cooperative diplomatic stance. This makes your neighbours hate you less. I think we were in the one that gives you plus 100 border friction, essentially making your neighbours get angry with you all the time. So now we're going to be nice to our neighbours until we don't need to be. That's the plan. We've got loads of research projects to finish up, anomalies to research, empty systems to build up, loads of planets still that I can colonise, and an economy to fix as we prepare to become the crisis, which as mentioned just is a matter of time. We have to get a bunch of traditions which will just trickle in over time, and then we'll see what happens. Amid my economic analysis I discovered something. You get these tiny little things on the right that say that certain bases aren't connected to your trade network. I never knew what to do about that, I always thought it just meant it was impossible to connect them so you had to just live with it. Turns out you can click on them and just manually connect them to the trade network, and this makes you more money. So that's a handy discovery to make. I've got my economic policy set up to prioritise creating commercial goods from trade, since we're struggling to manufacture them. Skipping now to like half an hour later, we've got some political developments. Our peace treaty with these purple guys has expired. They were also for a while guaranteed by another faction, meaning I'd have to fight somebody else if I wanted to invade them. But that guarantee was randomly revoked, and that's very interesting news, so now I'm thinking about going to attack them again to finish them off. Still their main stuff is close to me, making them a really easy invasion target. We can take all of the good stuff with just a small invasion that only requires a little bit of influence to pull off. But before that invasion goes ahead, I actually finish getting the next tradition tree, so it's time to become the crisis and enter the Nemesis DLC properly. We click on this thing, let's see what it does. The first thing it does, and really the main thing it does, is it gives us loads of free Cassus bellies. They come in two flavours, one is a vassalization one and the other is an extermination one. The vassalization one is effectively the same Cassus Belly you can already get for free by just demanding somebody be your vassal, they'll refuse and you get the vassalization Cassus Belly. So it's kind of like nothing, although you can use it on factions that are equal in strength to you, which I don't think you can do with the normal vassalization justification. And the other one, just kill them. Well, I suppose that's very crisis-like, 
But the thing about having an extermination caster spell is that's not very good for us economically. We're once again having to explain to our bugs that if we go in there and kill them all, they won't contribute to our economy and we need that to kill other people. So it's all about that future killing investment. In this case, I can't vassalize the purple people. I think it's because I have a claim on their only remaining planet and you're not allowed to vassalize territory you have territorial claims to for whatever reason. That means we're going to have to invade them normally and invade them normally I do. So here's a straight up not crisis themed war. We're just going in to kill their tiny fleet. They certainly couldn't rebuild after we took them downtown last time. It looks like they focus on putting defense platforms on their star bases, which won't really help them. We quickly wipe them out. The war comes to a swift end after like one minute of actual gameplay. But it doesn't end quite as I thought because we took their planet. This causes all of their territory to be disbanded and go back to being controlled by nobody. I had hoped it would end up being controlled by me. It being controlled by no one is annoying because now we have to expend a bunch of influence to get it and more importantly, somebody else is going to be expending influence to get it from the other side. There's another faction down there so they can expand up and claim some of the territory that could have been reserved for me if I was more careful. This starts a sort of race. Ideally, we want to get down to the two choke points at the end of this blob. Those guys on the other side are actually the number two faction right now. We're the number one faction. I had actually expected some resistance though to me declaring my intention to be the crisis and intention to kill everybody, I guess. We can see on the contact screen that we aren't well liked, a few factions seem to like us, but I think we're not well liked just for being xenophobic and being very different in terms of our civics to the other factions. What I kind of thought would happen is you'd get like minus 400 relations with everybody because you're planning to kill them. And there would be like a coalition that forms against you the second you became a crisis. That may yet be what happens, but for now, at least. Well, essentially becoming a crisis didn't do anything. It's almost a waste of an ascension perk. We got all those casus bellies, but we could get them via other means if we wanted to. Feels like we're not getting any respect for our crisis declaration. Guys, I really am going to kill you. Well, once it's economically viable for me to kill you, it's too beneficial for me to leave you alive, but I'm going to enslave you for a bit. That's going to be annoying. And you'll probably die later when we can just replace all of the pops with our delicious beetles or something. I don't know. It feels like we need to stir this galaxy up a bit and create some more material consequences for our crisis. I soon found a use for our new Casus Belli. I'm going to use it to start a war with those guys from earlier who started claiming some of my territory. So now we're in a vassalization war with them. But there is a twist here. Where I border their faction, it's actually a little bit of a cut off section. It looks like the Hive has also attacked them and cut off part of their territory. So we can invade a bit of these guys, but not most of them. That will mean we can't really press this war goal. I'm essentially going for some sort of status quo resolution where we take the bit that's near us. There's my efforts to claim as much territory as I could out of that block that appeared. Unfortunately, the hive did get some of it. Here's a little battle with the forces of whoever these guys are that we're fighting now. I don't have that many ships here and it's mainly because my fleet is split twice. It's split between being here and being over at our old battlefront and this particular fleet is split between being at the top and bottom of this section to claim multiple parts at once. That was still enough though, even a quarter of our strength will deal with them. Until it doesn't, the twist is that before I finish occupying this area, they do come back with a bunch more ships. What I wanted to do is quickly grab a status quo resolution before they started reconquering everything here. A missile in flight, we can get a piece right now and maybe it won't hit. Actually, that's not how the piece works anymore. It takes a while to go through. But we can't take status quo piece at the moment because I forgot to take this place at the very top. And if that place was left out, that would be very artistically poor and we can't have this. Our crisis needs to be as beautiful as it is devastating. Therefore, we are going to engage in battle with their more powerful fleet. By this point though, I'd united my local fleets together 
and just built up loads of stuff, gone over our fleet limit using a nearby shipyard to make our number bigger specifically for this engagement. So we can go in, take some losses, it won't really matter too much. They're still going to lose more due to our number superiority. The balance bar there is kind of even. Someone explained to the balance of power is like your hull strength or something rather than your offensive strength. I can't quite remember what it is. But actually we had an advantage. We won that naval battle and while the enemy fleet wasn't here for a bit after that, we finish capturing this blob. Now we can go for the piece. Still nowhere near getting the actual piece that we went for initially with the Casus Belli. But grabbing status quo resolves things okay. It just creates a small vassal for us, so their faction was split into two versions of the same faction. Some of it will be our vassal, the rest will carry on. We'll have to get them later, but before then we need to go through this high faction, so they'll be next on the list I suppose, especially with us having a land grab race with us on another front. They would be our next natural enemy, but I suppose we'll get to that in a future part because we are once again out of footage. As mentioned last time, I'll keep the episodes a bit short because what I'm mainly doing is making those numbers at the top be good, but I'm not showing you how I did it because it was a long and tedious process. You can see on the right, I've got loads of empty building slots. I'm sort of half paying attention to the economy at this point because I've got so many colonies. It's annoying to manage and difficult to remember what I was trying to do with every planet. So it's only getting more haphazard, but the numbers are all good and we probably have more numbers than everybody else just because we have more colonies producing things even if they're not doing it at maximum efficiency. I sincerely doubt the AI are doing things with maximum efficiency either. So it's all fine. Therefore, we still haven't really become a crisis at the end of part two. We've technically done it, but nothing especially new has happened. I really don't know if there is anything that's going to happen in this DLC. This is an exploratory campaign. So why don't you join me for part three? to see if anything's going to happen.